اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم کنتم خیر امت اخرجت للناس تعمرون بالمعروف و تنحون للمنکر و تؤمنون باللہ ولو آمن اہل الكتاب لکان خیر اللہم منہم المؤمنون و اکثرہم الفاسقون صدق اللہ صدق اللہ المران عظیم My dear children, I read to you an ayah from the Holy Quran, from Surah Ali Imran, chapter 3, ayah number 110. In it, Allah Bari Ta'ala describes us, Muslims. He says, Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhajat linnas that you are the best of people evolved for mankind. Ta'muruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna nil munkar because you enjoin what is right and you forbid what is wrong. Wa tu'minuna billah and you believe in Allah. Once this high status qualification is given to you, he imposes certain responsibilities upon us. He says, وَلَوْ آمَنَ أَحْلُ الْكِتَابِ لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ But if the people of the book who are the people of the book? The Jews and the Christians. If they hearken to this message of the Quran, it will be better for them. In other words, it will be better for you. Min humul mu'minuna. Among them, there are good people. Sincere people. Among the Jews and the Christians, there are good people. Wa aksuruhumul fasikun. But the majority of them are perverted transgressors. That's ayah number 110. Now, the whole verse is so versatile, it is so adaptable that I myself can deliver a dozen different lectures on this ayah alone. Quote the ayah and a different topic. Quote the ayah and expound the verses. A dozen topics I can deliver. We haven't got the time for that. I'm going to only concentrate on the last phrase. Min humul mu'minuna wa aktor humul fasikun. Among them, there are good people, but the majority of them are perverted transgressors. Now, how do we deal with them? The good ones. The good one among the Jews and the Christians. We have these books. What the Bible says about Muhammad. If you get this, master some of the verses and talk to them, to the good one. Muhammad, the natural successor to Christ. Master them, talk to them, share the thoughts with them. Desert storm, of Christ in Islam, talk to them. This is what Islam says about Jesus Christ. These are for the good ones. Muhammad the greatest. Read them, master the verses, master the facts, share with them. But this morning, we are going to specialize on وَأَكْثَرُهُمُ fasikun. But the majority of them are perverted transgressors. And I'm sure you experienced them. I'm sure some Christians have approached you at some time in your life. Hmm? Knocking at your door, wanting to tell you that you're going to go to hell. You know, salvation only comes with the blood of the Lord Jesus. Anybody who has not had such an experience, please put up your hand. There is a Muslim here, a Christian has not approached him yet to say, you Muslim, you are all going to go to hell. The salvation for you lies in the belief that Jesus Christ died for your sins. If no Christian has approached you yet, please put up your hand. No Christian has approached you. No Christian has approached you at all. At workplace, at school, nowhere. No Christian ever told you that you must believe in Jesus. No Christian. You, my brothers, are living in an ivory tower. I don't know how you are protected because man is universal. The Christians are running amok. You know, raising the dust all over the world, and you too are the most fortunate guys living in some heavenly place that no Christian has come been able to reach you yet. It's a miracle. Because our, all the classes I have had, all the classes so far, a number of them, workshops like this, you are the only two I have come across that a Christian hasn't reached them. However, I believe you. So, for this perverted transgressor, we have this book, Combat Kit. Now, this book has come out as a result 
of my visit to the Sudan last year. In the Sudan, after my lecture, every lecture of mine is followed by questions and answers. At question time, a university student poses the question. Said, so, Mr. Didat, the Christian missionaries are coming into our country from America, from Britain, and they come to our cities, to Khartoum, and we welcome them, ahlan wa sahlan, you know, the traditional Arabic welcome, just think you are a member of the family, and be at ease, and the guy makes himself feel comfortable. As soon as he's seated, he starts with the Muslim. He said, do you believe in the day of judgment? What do you say? Yes, the Muslim says, yes, we believe. It's an article of faith with us. We believe in the Yawm Al-Qiyamah, day of judgment. He said, yes, I believe. Second question, that after judgment is established, if you deserve heaven, you'll get it. If you deserve hell, you'll get it. You believe in that? The Muslim says, yes, I believe in that. He knows the answers already. This is a strategy he has planned of getting you. Third question, this heaven of yours, where will it be? On earth or in the skies? What does your Quran say? The question is, what does your Quran say? The earth, the earth will be changed, but the heaven will be I don't want to know about the earth will be changed. I want to know where your heaven will be on earth or in the skies. Simple question. Huh? Huh? The earth. Earth. Or you say heaven, anything. That guy knows. He said, right, show me. You said on earth. He said, show me. You say in the sky, he said, show me. And he knows that 99% of our people, maybe 100%, they won't be able to show. Am I correct, my son? We have our prejudices, we have our ideas, we have heard our alims talking, and in the back of our mind, we have some ideas of most of us, we are not worried. We are really not worried. We believe in heaven, we believe in hell. Where? It didn't worry me. Where? Where will it be? It's haq. Heaven is haq. Hell is haq. Where? That didn't worry me. And he seems to worry nobody. If you deserve heaven, you'll get it. If you deserve hell, you'll get it. Where? That didn't worry anybody. Doesn't seem to worry. Didn't worry me. So the man wants to know, the student, what is the answer? And up to that moment, I didn't have the answer. I hadn't given it a thought. So I said, if the Christian had posed it to me, this question, I would have to confess that I don't know. I have to be honest. If I don't know, I don't know. That doesn't mean I'll be converted to Christianity. I just don't know. I'm not supposed to know everything. But so saying, I says, I'm confessing that I'm ashamed of myself. I'm a born Muslim, 75 years old, and in the eyes of the people, a very knowledgeable fellow. You think Uncle Didat knows everything? I know my limitations, but in the minds of the people, Uncle Didat has the answers. In your mind, I know, <laughs> what little I know. But now, and I'm ashamed of myself to confess to the Christian that I don't know. But so saying, I said we must turn the tables. We must turn the tables on him, on the Christian. So I said, look, I am ashamed of myself that I do not know the Quran as, as well as I ought to know. But I take it that you know your Bible. And that guy has got one under his arm. He never moves without it. The missionary. He said, of course. He's too arrogant to say, humble himself, say, no, well, you know. Hmm? He said, of course. So what's that? Under your arm. It's the Bible. He said, yes. He said, can I have a look? So he gives it to me. He'll give it to you. Oh, he'll be happy. That's what he wants. He wants to introduce the Bible to you. You see, this is a strategy once he asks you, what does your Quran say? And when you fail, then he will tell you, now look, I gave you the first chance to expound to me your Quran. But since you have failed now, I will show you what my Bible says. You are now duty bound out of courtesy to listen to him. He gave you the first chance. You failed. So he said, I will show you what my Bible says. And you can't say no. So now he's going to push the Bible down your throat. Strategy. Beautiful strategy. So I said, can I have a look? So he gives it to me. I open the book. 
Genesis chapter 19. Can you all find Genesis chapter 19? Genesis is the first book of the Bible. First book of the Bible, as soon as you start, is Genesis chapter 19. First book of the Bible, chapter 19. Find it, find it, find it. You can't find it? Found it? Everybody? Chapter 19, man, you'll see it written here on the top, 19. 19, what's written there? What's there? What's this? Huh? What number is there? I said 19. Right. Found it? First book of the Bible. Chapter 19. Page? Page 14. Right. Or page 15 in your... Right. Verse 30. Verse 30. Got it? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right. Read it, one of you, aloud. Let everybody hear. Forty, I will do, I will loud, loud, loud. Forty, I will, I will not do it. Verse 30. Start. 30, 30. Stand up. 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 Sit down. Very good. You all followed it. This is speaking about the Prophet Lot, Lut alayhi salam. We call him Hazrat Lut alayhi salam. His people were destroyed for unnatural lust, sodomy. We call them gays. His nation was a nation of gays. So Allah destroyed them. So after the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, he and his two daughters go and live in a cave. And in the cave, the eldest daughter has an idea that now, if our father dies and there's no more, his name does not carry on, let us preserve his offspring. To do that, let us make our father drink wine and have sex with him, and so we may preserve the seed. Offspring. So the eldest daughter goes and sleeps with the father, has intercourse with the father, and collects his seed. The next night she tells the younger, you do the same tonight. And so then the younger one does it and she also collects the father's seed. And thus, just like that, both the daughters of Lot will be child by the father. That is the story there. Verses 30 to 36. Now what you do, what you do, you circle that. Verses 30 to 36, you circle that. Circle that. 30 to 36, circle it. Don't be afraid. If you haven't got red, black, circle it. You can't be too choosy now. Circle it. Like this. Right. At home when you have time, you have a highlighter, highlight it. And the pertinent phrases, you want to underline it, underline it in red. But for the moment, you underline, circle it. And on the top you write, incest between father and daughters. Right through. Look, 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 look here first. Right through. The two pages. 
incest between father and daughters. Right through. I said right through two pages. Why don't you people listen? Right through. Right across both pages. Incest between father and daughters. Why don't you people listen? Why don't you listen? I said right through from one end to the other. This is the Bible given to you free of charge. I don't know why you should be careful you know, for sparing it. And underline it. Underline it. Underline the words. Now in your combat kit, in your combat kit, your booklet, open page 13, page 13 of your combat kit. Page 13 of your combat kit. Got it? Right. You see the A, A. Now this is modern English. What you are reading is the King James English. Collecting seed, collecting his this offspring and all that. This Bible, the modern Bible, good news Bible in today's English, modern English. This is how it reads. That night, they, are you all following me? Both the daughters of Lot gave him, the father Lot, wine to drink. And the older daughter had intercourse with him. You see, it speaks plainly instead of saying collecting his seed and lie with him, it said had intercourse with him. This is the new good news English Bible in today's English. It says had intercourse with him. The next day, the older daughter said to her sister, I slept with him last night. Now let's get him drunk again tonight. And you sleep with him. Then each of us will have a child by our father. So that night, they got him drunk, and the younger daughter had intercourse with him, with the father. In this way, both of lost daughters became pregnant by the father. Now you understand clearly. Hmm? Now, on the side of that book of yours, A, on the side of it, you put down P15. 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 That's it, P15. So in other words, now it's easy reference. Page 15, easy to find. Because when I said Genesis, at times a guy opens Exodus. And I said, chapter 19, 19 Exodus, and he's reading. I said, hey, I know what that verse 30 sounds like. And the guy is reading from Exodus. I said, I said, Genesis! Huh? And the guy's got Exodus. So, where? He says, Genesis. I said, this is Exodus, man. So now, make it easy for you, page 15, you'll find it in your Bible. Now, every Bible is not the same. These ones given to you are all uniform, so you can put page 15. But if you have a Bible at home, that might not be page 15, might be 14, might be 16. So you have to change the numbers for that Bible in your listing. But this one here, everybody is uniform, got the same Bible, page 15. Right. Now, open page 15 again. Page 15. Page 15 of your Bible. Got it? At the bottom, at the bottom of page 15, look here, at the bottom, right across both pages. Right across both pages. Right. Incest between son and his mother. Incest right across the two pages. Incest between son and his mother. And put down there P31. P31 means page 31. So next jump, now easy to find. Next one from here, page 31. 
write down P31 and open P31, P31. P31. Got it? And now write across, write across page 30 and 31, write down incest and the heading, incest between son and his mother. Incest between son and his mother. Write nice, bold, big, big writing. That's right. Between son and his mother. <coughs> and on page 31, circle verse 22. Circle verse 22. Circle verse 22. My brothers can't find page, can't find verse 22. And you want to go into battle against the Nasara. That guy comes with AK-47 and you, you can't find page 32. Verse 22 you can't find. This is page 27. I said page 31. Huh? You can't find page 31 and you want to go and fight the Nasara. You're going to fight Nasara. <coughs> you can't find page 31 and you're going to fight the Nasara. My soldiers, my soldiers, <laughs> right, read it, stand up, read it aloud. While it is right way in the land, Robin went and lay with, with him, his father, his father spoke on to God, and Israel heard of it. Right, it says, while Israel, who is Israel? Yes. Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam. Yaqub alayhi salam. In English they say Jacob. We say Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam. When he dwelt in the land in Palestine, Reuben, his eldest son, Reuben, his firstborn, his eldest son, he went and had intercourse with Bilha, his father's wife, concubine. What is your father's wife to you? Your mother. Your father's wife is your mother. So he went and had sexual intercourse with his mother. And Israel heard it. See, they told him, say, you know, your son, he grinded your, 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 your wife, his mother. And the guy didn't react. No reaction, nothing, not one word. The guy didn't lose his temper, he didn't blow his top. <laughs> amazing, amazing these people, you know. You know, an old man of 80, crippled, paralyzed on one side. If somebody told him that his son was having intercourse with his wife, his, his own mother, that guy is going to blow his top. You know that? He's paralyzed, but he's going to lose his top. He's going to swear, and you, your bastard, you son of a bitch, you know, you, the whole world is full of bloody prostitutes, and you're going to leave them all, and you fuck your own mother, you son of a bitch, you bastard. He might have a heart attack. You agree? Yes. The guy's going to have a heart attack. But Israel, he heard it. His son did it. <laughs> No reaction. He didn't say one word. He didn't scold his son. Say, you bastard, what you did? Huh? No, nothing at all. Now, we are asking the Christian, what is the moral? Of daughters collecting the father's seed and begetting bastard children, what is the moral? Son grinding his mother, what's the moral? What's the lesson? Every story, there must be a lesson. We tell our children fables, fairy tales. The fox and the grapes. You heard about it? That this greedy fox, he sees a bunch of grapes and he wants it. You know, no fox jumps for grapes. They love your chickens and your lamb, but not your grapes. But this fox, he jumps for the grapes and he can't reach it and he tries again and again until he tires. So he says, sour grapes. <laughs> Rubbish. Because he couldn't get it. So we are telling our children, don't be like that, my child. When you can't get a thing, it's no good, it's rubbish. You see? A moral, a lesson. The dog in his shadow. 
You heard the story? A dog finds a bone with a bone in his mouth, He's crossing a wooden bridge across a river. He sees the reflection in the water. He sees another dog with a bone in the mouth. He doesn't know that's a reflection. So he's greedy for the other dog's bones. So he's a boo! So he lost what he had. So telling you, my child, don't be like that greedy dog. What Allah has given you, be grateful. Don't be greedy for the other dog's bone. Otherwise, you're going to lose what you have. More, more, more. Ernest fairy tales, stories, tales. More behind it. Otherwise, it serves no purpose. Now we are asking the Christian, what is the moral of the story? Come, 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 come. What is the moral? Daughter seducing the father, what's the moral? Son raping his mother, what's the moral? No moral. So it's immoral. If it's no moral, then it's immoral. This does not fit into the word of God, into a book of God. It fits into a book of pornography. This is pornography and cheap. You know, books of pornography are very expensive. This man, you get it cheap. I don't know how many, how many shillings here. You know, you get it very cheap. The first ones when I was young, it was two and six. Two shillings and six pence. That's about 25 pennies those days. Man, I can read all this. And I was searching for the Arabian Nights. The Arabian Nights, the unexpurgated edition. When I could have bought this for two and six. Two and six. So now, return to page 13. Return to page 13. And your item B, page 13, item B, there. Item B, page 13, of your combat kit. Page 13 of your combat kit, item B. Put on the side, P31, P31. That's modern English, P31. It says that while Jacob that Israel was living in the land, Reuben, the firstborn, his eldest son, had sexual intercourse with Bilhah, his father's concubine. And it tells you Genesis chapter 35, verse 22. But now, to find Genesis chapter 35, verse 22, it's take you time, so you put down P31. So P31, easy to find. P31, easy to find. Next one. On page 31, open page 31 again of your Bible, page 31 of your Holy Bible, and write across two pages. That means write big, bold handwriting. Write across the two pages, write incest between father-in-law and daughter-in-law. Incest between father-in-law and write across two pages. Don't be afraid to disfigure the Bible. It's given to you free of charge. Between daughter-in-law, between father-in-law and daughter-in-law. on P33, P33, that means you'll find that subject on P33, 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 and open P33, open page 33. Page 33. Page 33. For some unique, mysterious reason, these revisers of the Bible, Revised Standard Version, they chose to put the chapter 38 in small types. I don't know why. Every Bible on earth so far I've seen, same universal type, continues every page. But these people, for some reason, look at it. Look at the typing, types. Very, very tiny types. Chapter 38. You see chapter 38 there? Tiny types. They don't really want you to read it. Why, 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 why are they trying? What a time to save paper? Huh? Everything is the word of God. And chapter 38, they brought it down. Small size. Look at, look at it. This is the first time I see such a thing. Such a practice. Page 38. Page 
33 and verses verses 15 to 19 circle them verses 15 look at this 15 to 19 circle them verses 15 to 19 circle them that's it that's it 15 to 19 circle them circle them like that frame them frame them I mean frame them frame them it tells you verse 15 when Judah saw her he thought her to be a harlot what's a harlot huh? a prostitute a hookah a whore a prostitute, a hooker, a whore, a harlot, means the same thing. In Zulu they say, I don't say that. Well, that's why you word like that. Isifebe. <laughs> right. So he saw, he thought her to be a harlot. For she had covered her face. He, he went over to her at the roadside and said, Come, let me come into you. In the modern translation, it says, let me have intercourse with you. Come in means to have intercourse with you. Come, let me come in to you. For he did not know that she was his daughter-in-law. Now these words in the, in the King James Version, they are in brackets. They are in brackets. They took it out. The Revised Standard Version, they took it out. In brackets means these are the words of the editor. These are not the words of God. God didn't say because she, he didn't know that she was his daughter-in-law. The words are in bracket, but they have taken the brackets out. This is the usual practice. She said, what will you give me that you may come in to me? He answered, I will send you a kid from the flock, a goat kid. And she said, will you give me a pledge, a guarantee? Till you send it. He said, what pledge shall I give you? Give you. She replied, your signet means your ring and, uh, replied, and the cord, actually the bracelet, the bang bangles used to wear those days, and your staff that is in your hand. So, so he gave them to her and went in to her, I mean, had sex with her, and she conceived by him. And she conceived by him, I means she became pregnant by him. The whole chapter 38, it speaks about Judah. Judah, the father of the Jewish race, from whom we get the word Judea, Judaism. Judah in Hebrew, Huda in Arabic, Huda, from whom we get the word Yahudi, Hudi, Yahudi, Jew, all come from the word Judah. This man, the father of the Jewish race, he is going to Timnath to share his sheep. You must read the whole chapter at home. He's going to share his sheep to his farm place. And this woman, she wants to take revenge on the old man. Because this old man, Jacob, had three, Judah, had three sons. Er, E-R, Er, Onan, O-N-A-N, Onan, and Shelah, three sons. And when Er was big enough, he got him married to a woman called Tamar. <coughs> Chapter 38, when you read it at home, Tamar. But Er erred. He did something wrong. Er, he er, er, he erred. He er, er, he did. Er. So God killed him, says the Bible. But it doesn't spell out what. It's a lesson for us. If you do something God doesn't like, God can destroy you. So the old man tells his second son, Onan, he said, You go in unto your brother's wife and beget child by her, so that the name of the deceased can carry on. The Jews were very jealous, very particular to see that the name of the person carries on. The brother died, no offspring, so his name will perish. So now you go and give seed to your sister-in-law, your, your, sister your widowed sister-in-law, and the child is born, he'll carry the name of Ur. So his name carries on, Ur's children. Although it is yours, it carries on Ur's. So this guy Onan, while he's having intercourse with his sister-in-law, at the critical moment, the thought occurs to him, that the seed is mine. 
The seed is mine, but who's going to get the credit? My brother. So he pulls out and he spills it on the ground. So God kills him also. The Bible says. You read that whole chapter. God kills him also. Another lesson. You're supposed to do your duty for performing it. Gladly. And this word, onan, is in the Oxford Dictionary. In the Collins Dictionary. You'll find it there as onanism. Onanism. Anybody heard the word onanism before? You heard. You were a medical man? No. Onanism. And generally nobody knows. It's a unique word, onanism. It comes from the Holy Bible, the sin of onan. It is called in technical terms coitus interruptus. Onanism means coitus interruptus. You have sex and you interrupt and you spill it outside. It is called onanism, coming from the Holy Bible. So now the old man tells his, that widowed daughter-in-law, now you go and stay at your father's house until the third fellow is big enough. At the back of his mind, this woman is a witch. On account of her, he lost two sons. See, the old people is thinking that, you know, this has done something. He's eaten my child's heart, his liver. See? He lost two sons on account of this witch. So conveniently, he forgot, left us, let her go to hell. Third guy's grown, he gets married, but that woman is not being called. So she wants to take revenge. So this is the revenge she's taking. She gets the news that the old man is going to his farm to share his sheep, so she goes and sits by the roadside. And the old man is game. Hmm? He's old, but he's game. He sees this woman, he said, allow me to have sex with you. So she said, what will you give me? He said, I'll give you a kid from the flock. He said, what guarantee that I will give it? This kid, goat kid, maybe you have sex and you go away, I don't see you anymore. So what guarantee do you want? So this is your ring and your bracelet and your staff. So the old man gave it to her and she became pregnant and twins, twins, one hit the old man, the two sons failed. This old man, one hit, twins. Fares and Zara, you read the whole story. But when the firstborn, you see now, there were twins. And the nurse can see from the size of the abdomen that there are twins. And they are also very particular, the Jews. Which one came out first? Which one saw the light of day first? Because the first one gets all the inheritance. Unlike in Islam, I have ten sons, they all get the equal share. Hmm, not the Jews, the eldest born gets everything. So now if they are twins and they are identical, and once they both are out and they get mixed up, you don't know which one came out first, you can be doing somebody down. Very particular. So the nurse is waiting. The first one puts out his hand from his mother's womb. You know, in the classroom, says, put up your hands. Though the first guy who puts up the hand gets the reward. So he puts out his hand from his mother's womb, and so the nurse ties a scarlet thread. So this one came out first. But it's too sensitive, so he draws it back. So the other one comes out. So she calls his name Fares. Fares means guy who breaks the queue. Who does the other guy out of his turn. Fares. Then came out his brother with the scarlet thread. So she called him Zara. Zara in Hebrew means red. Because he had the scarlet thread. And who are they? These bastard children. Children of incest. They are the great, great, great grandfathers of your God, Jesus Christ. They are the great grandfathers of your God, Jesus Christ. In the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 1, verse 1, it begins. This is the genealogy of Jesus Christ. You know, his ancestry. Who are his fathers and grandfathers. A man who got no genealogy, they give him a genealogy. Matthew, chapter 1, verse 1. This is the genealogy of Jesus Christ. The son of Abraham, the son of David. You know the names, Abraham, David? Yes, you're familiar. Son of Abraham, son of David. And Abraham begat Isaac. You still know, Isaac. And Isaac because Jacob, you know Jacob. And Jacob because Judas, you know Judas now. And his brethren. And Judas beget Fares and Zara of Tamar. Now you are in deep waters. Zara, Fares, Zara, Tamar, all new names. So if there is a Bible with a cross reference, it will tell you chapter 38. And 38 we discovered there's a father-in-law prohibiting with his daughter-in-law and producing these bastard twins. And they are the great grandfathers of your God, Jesus Christ. What's the moral? What is the moral? Huh? Your God, Jesus Christ, these are his ancestors, bastards. Begetter of bastards. There are six bastards and begetters of bastards in the genealogy. A man who got no genealogy, they gave him a genealogy, and they gave him the genealogy six bastards and begetters of bastards. 
Can you believe it? And they are proud. They are proud. With the shit, they are getting customers. With all this rubbish, they are getting customers. And my cry was last night, and with the Quran, we are not getting customers. What's the reason? The man said, you are not talking. You are not opening your mouth. You mind your own business. It is the Muslim's business to mind everybody's business. To save everybody from hellfire, that's your business. That is the Muslim's business. It's your business is to save the other fellow. Otherwise, on the day of judgment, Allah will question. Will question each and every one of us. All those guys are going to go to hell. The Hindus will go to hell. Say yes. Mushriks. And the Christian will go to hell. Allah says they're doing shirk. They say Jesus is God. They're going to go to hell. He said yes. What did you do to save the guy? Then I was too busy. <laughs> you're too busy to do my job. I'm telling you, we are in trouble. We are in deep waters. We are worried about the other guy. Whether he's going to go to heaven or hell. I said, what about worrying about yourself? You haven't done your job. God, Allah won't question you. We are in trouble. I said, open your mouth. What little you know. One word you know. One fact you know. Come on, share this. And here, yeah, all this is being given to you this morning. This is a very distasteful thing to me. What I'm doing now to you. Oh, talking about all this filth and rubbish. I should be talking to you about the Quran about the miracles of the Quran, about Jesus in the Quran and all that kind of thing I love to talk about. But instead of talking shit, all this bloody rubbish, this is an inoculation I'm giving you. An inoculation, what is that? It's, it's, it's an agent of disease introduced into your body to create a fever that your body might get activated against that cholera germs, anti-cholera injection, very painful, you, know, you get fever after three days and get swollen up to give you that fever. Once you got that fever, the body fights because it's very minute and overcomes the cholera germ and the body is now prepared, ready. Next time, actually the cholera germ goes inside, the body is geared into action and it does the job and you don't even know what happened. It's done the job, inoculated you. Inoculations are painful. This is an inoculation I'm giving you. It's painful to me too. To talk all this shit. It's painful, but it has to be done. I'm trying to inoculate you all against becoming a Christian. That you can become a bad Muslim, a bloody drunkard, and a gambler, and an adulterer. Mm -hmm. All these things can happen. But you won't in a hurry become a Christian with that bait. With that bait, you won't bite. That's, I'm inoculating you against that book. That's all. I'm not trying to make you into better Muslims that you must pray five times a day and do tahajjud and, ish and ishraq and chaos. That's, we leave it to our experts. They will teach you all that. You see, keep a beard, make it standard size. That's, we leave it to the experts. I'm only trying to inoculate my children against and to make you into a warrior that you will now be itching to get at the Christian. Come, come, man. The guy who wants to fight this, come, come, man. What is this? Read this. I want to hear. Read it aloud. I want to hear. Number one, he won't read it. He's trained. He's trained not to follow instructions. We follow instructions. Somebody said, read Surah Fatiha. He said, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen. Ar Rahmanir Rahim. He said, read Surah Ikhlas. He said, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Kulhu Allahu Ahad. Allahu Samad. Lam Yalid wa Lam Yulad. Wa Lam Yakun Lahu Kufun Ahad. You follow instructions. The Christian is trained. You say, read this. He scans. He smells a rat. <laughs> he smells a rat. He wants to change the subject. So what's wrong? Isn't that the book of God? He said, I want to hear you read. If he reads, if not, you read it for him. I want to know what's the moral. What is the moral of father, daughter seducing the father? What is the moral of son cohabiting with his mother? Hmm? Then now, father-in-law with his daughter-in-law and be getting bastard children who become the great-grandfathers of your God, Jesus. It's a privilege, man, and an honor to be the great-grandfather of a prophet. No? Hmm? To be a great-grandfather of Muhammad or Yaqub or Dawud or any prophet. If you are a great-grandfather of one of these prophets, it's an honor. These bastard children, you know, children of incest are the great-grandfathers of your God, Jesus, according to your genealogy. What's the moral? No more.
is immoral of the highest order. Now at the bottom, at the bottom of page 33, bottom of page 33, right across the two pages, 32, 33, right across at the bottom, write down incest and rape between brother and sister. Incest and rape. Right across. At the bottom. I said at the bottom. You writing on the top. Hi, 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 hi. My soldiers. <laughs> My soldiers. I said at the bottom. And he was writing on the top. You don't know what is bottom and what is top. Between brother, brother and sister. Put down P, 245, 46. 245 and stroke 6. 245, 246. But I was at fault. I should have told you something from the, for the top, which I had missed. Now, on the top you write, on page 32, 33, on the top you write incest between father-in-law and daughter-in-law. On the top, incest between father-in-law and daughter-in-law. At the bottom you got page 245, 46. 245, 46. Open up 245, 46. Page 245. Open 45 first. Page 245. There's only one page 245. Right, 245, 245, 245, that's it. And right on the top, rape and incest between brother and sister. Right on the top, rape and incest between brother and sister. Between brother and sister. Verses 5 on page 245, verse 5 downwards. Circle it from 5 downwards right up to the end. 5 downwards. 5 downwards. Verse 5 downwards right up to the end, right up to the bottom. That's right. That's right. That's good. And on the next page, from the top up to verse 14. Circle it. Next page, page 246, up to verse 14. Circle it. Very good. From verse 5, I'm reading to you from verse 5, verse 5 that you already circled. One of the friends, Amnon, Amnon is one of the sons of Hazrat Dawud alayhi salam. Amnon is son of Hazrat Dawud alayhi salam. David, the prophet David. He is now in love with his sister. He wants his sister. He wants to have sex with his sister. So his friend gives him advice how to get his sister. He's going to teach your brothers and sisters also. He says, now if you want your sister, you want to rape her, how, how? So it says, verse 5, the advice given to him is, lie down on your bed and pretend to be ill. Pretend that you are sick. And when your father comes to see you, say to him, let my sister Tamar come and give me bread to eat. 
And the other Bible says, nice, nice cakes, cakes, <laughs> special cakes that my sister makes. I love them very much. You know, the samosas she makes, the bhajia she makes, you know, mm, the, the cookies she makes. I love them. I like to eat from my sister's hands. Said, let my sister Tamar come and give me bread to eat and prepare the food in my sight. While I'm watching, I will see her cooking. That I may see it and eat it from her hand. So Amnon lay down and pretended to be ill. And when the king came to see him, Amnon said to the king, pray, means I beg you, let my sister Tamar come and make a couple of cakes in my sight that I may eat from her hand. Then David sent her, sent to home to Tamar, saying, go to your brother Amnon's house and prepare food for him. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house where he was lying down. And she took dove and kneaded it and made cakes in his sight and emptied it out before him. But he refused to eat. And Amnon said, send out everyone from here, from me, all the workers, get them out. All the workers, all the servants. So everyone went out from him. Then Amnon said to Tamar, his sister, bring the food into the chamber that I may eat from your hand. And Tamar took the cakes she had made and brought them into chamber to Amnon, her brother. But when she brought them near to, eat, to him to eat, he took hold of her and said to her, come, lie with me, my sister. She answered him, No, my brother, do not force me, for such a thing is not done in Israel. Do not do this wanton folly. As for me, where, I could, where could I carry my shame? And as for you, you would be as one of the wanton fools in Israel. Now therefore, I pray you, I am begging you, speak to the king, for he will not withhold me from you. But he would not listen to her, and being stronger than her, than she, he forced her and lay with her, he raped her. Brother rapes his sister. Hmm? What's the moral? What's the moral? No moral. Yes, my son. Speak to the king, for he not withhold me from you. It means when he speaks to the king, right. the king will give the permission. permission. Right. Maybe those days they were, they were able to marry the sisters. Hmm? Maybe, you know, or a stepsister. Those days. In Islam it's forbidden. But now, he said, look, ask the, ask the king, and he might say, okay, get married, why rape me? Why force me? Why do this? But he's stronger than her, and he raped her. Brother rapes his sister, his father's daughter. Moral, moral, immoral. Right. At the bottom of page 244, 245, bottom of page 244, 45, write down, Wholesale rape, wholesale rape and incest between son and his mothers. At the bottom, on page 244, 245, write down, wholesale incest, wholesale, not retail. Wholesale incest between son and his mothers, not one mother. Rape and incest, wholesale rape and wholesale incest. Wholesale rape and incest between son and his mothers. Son and his mothers. P250. P250. Just a couple of pages away. 250. 250. And on page 250, right across, put down rape and incest between son and his mothers. Rape and incest between son and his mothers. between son and his mothers. And verse 22, on page 250, verse 22, 
Underline verse 22 on page 250. Underline, circle, verse 22. That's it. Verse 22, circle it. No, only 122. Page 50, 250. One. Two verse 22s on page 250. That will be a miracle. This one and this one. Uh, the first one. Okay. Circle set, set, the whole verse. Circle the whole verse. Circle it, right. Circle it, right. So, very short verse, very short verse. So, they pitched a tent for Absalom. This is another son of Hazrat Dawud alayhi salam. You know, there's a saying, father like son. Father like son. The father, according to the Holy Bible, Hazrat Dawud alayhi salam, David, he committed adultery with with Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah, and he had him murdered. So Dawud was a murderer and an adulterer, according to the holy book. We believe all the prophets are masoom, sinless. All, Lut salam, Dawud salam, Suleiman salam, we believe all the prophets are sinless. The book says, Lord committed incest. Now they tell us about David in other places that he committed adultery with Uriah's wife, Bathsheba. Wife of Uriah. And he had him murdered. So Dawud was a murderer and an adulterer. According to the holy book, we believe all the prophets are masoom, sinless. All. Lut salam, Dawud salam, Suleiman salam. We believe all the prophets are sinless. The book says, Lord committed incest. Now they tell us about David in other places that he committed adultery with Uriah's wife, Bathsheba. And he got the man murdered. He's a murderer and an adulterer. Now the sons follow the example of the father. Absalom, he rapes his sister, one of his sons. Another son, this guy here, uh, is not, the other one, Amnon. Amnon raped his sister, and this is Absalom now. Absalom, another son of Dawud alayhi salam. He puts up a pitched up a tent for Absalom upon the roof. In the other Bible, on the palace roof, flat roof. He put up a tent. So the sun doesn't get him. And he lined up, he made ten of his father's wives to sleep. Ten of his mothers. His father's wife? Your father's wife is your mother. Ten of his father's wives, ten of his mothers, he made them to sleep. And one by one, he had intercourse with the whole bank lot of them. Ten of them. It's a great stud, that guy. You know? You know, like father, like son. The father did it to somebody's wife. Now this guy does it to his father's wife. Taking revenge. You did it to somebody else's wife. So now the son takes his revenge on his father. His father's wife is having sex. Ten, ten, one in a row. Wholesale. No retail business here. You bastards. What's the moral? What's the moral? You see, moral. With this crap. The Christian is getting converts. And you don't know. You, fa you fall for it. The guy says, Christ died for your sins. You know, salvation is yours, if you believe. You know, God is not interested in your fasting and your prayer. You pray five times a day, 50 times a day. Is God hungry for that? No. Is he hungry for your fa song, fasting? No. See, all your good deeds, he says, are like filthy rags. Salvation only comes through the blood of the Lord Jesus, and you buy with the shit. This is the bait he's using. He's catching fish. You and I can't catch fish with Allah's kalam. Simply because we're not doing the job. So right. This is just a taste. There's so much there. So much there in that book. Yes, my son. What does it mean? In the sight of whole Israel. In the sight of whole Israel. It means that the, everybody can see. See, you know, there were not 20-story buildings. A uh, park, your castle there, a flat roof, and everybody can see what's going on there. They say the guys put up a tent, uh -huh. and now he says one woman, there's ten, about all the women there, and now they're sleeping one by one, they're all lined up. <laughs> so the whole of Israel, everybody can see. 
Hey, hey, what's going on there? Hey, that Absalom. Hey, look, he's going into one, now into another, now into another. He did all ten of them, boing, 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 you know, with the AK-47. He, he did it. The bastard, he did it. To his father, to his mother. In the book of God, the shit, but he's there. Now you show it to him. You just show it to him. This new discovery I made, yesterday, yesterday, yes, in the hotel, in uh, Hilton Hotel in, uh, in uh, Nairobi, I'm at the reception. I see some people sitting there. They tell me to wait at the reception. I go down. Between two persons, there's a seat, so I go in. One person, I see a topi. So I see the Muslim, I say, Assalamu Alaikum. Assalamu Alaikum is plural. Peace be unto you all. Singular, Assalamu Alaikum. Girl, Assalamu Alaikum. But we say, Assalamu Alaikum, even if once on you all. So I went and sat down. The other guy is a Christian, African Christian. So I'm asking him, I said, look, I said, Salaam Alaikum, that also meant you, in Arabic. But I tell you, good morning. Because maybe you thought it's not for you, Salaam. But you see, this is what Jesus said. You know, when he went to that upper room, where they had the Last Supper, he goes in and says, peace be unto you. He didn't say that in English. What did he say? He said, Shalom Alaikum. Same as Salaam Alaikum. The Jews say shalom, we say salam. It's the same word, meaning the same thing. And a few other references I gave. From that, we got on. We're just chatting now, lightheartedly. So I said, you know, you, 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 small built, fellow of small built. Not like our Zulus, you know, the Zulus are very big guys. <laughs> Kenyans are a bit small. He was a small built. I said, you know, you, you're sleeping with your wife, and somebody, a robber, a burglar, he breaks in. And you wake up and you grapple with him. You grapple with him. And that guy gets the better of you. He's stronger than you. And he gets you on the floor and is now strangling you to death. You're suffocating. You're about to faint. And your poor wife, she's trying to help you and she can't help you. She's too weak. But she has a secret. She has some secret knowledge. The way she has been handling you at times, that you know when she gets you by the ball, she knows that you're finished. So she knows that secret. This guy, his genitals, you get him, he's finished. You, you, you. So she uses that to grapple with a robber, catches him by the genitals. And that guy lets go. Hmm? Now you get up and give him a couple of blows and push him out, but she still holds on. She never lets go. And you get him to the door, give him a few punches and kick him out. Close the door. She saved your life. Your wife saved your life. What will you do to her? It reads, when men fight, in the other Bible says when two men fight. When men fight with one another and the wife of the one draws near to rescue her husband, to save her husband, to rescue her husband from the hand of him who is beating him and puts out her hand and seizes him by the private parts, by his private parts, by his genitals, by his testicles, then you shall cut off her hand. Your eyes shall have no pity. That poor woman, she saved your life. So what you do? What you do? You chop off her hands. Coming from God, this is what God teaches you. Huh? The person who saved your life, shh, look at me, I'm talking to you. The person who saved your life, your wife, you chop off her hands. You think, can this come from God? You show it to any Christian. First time the story when you met, let's say a robber comes along to your house, and, and the guy has got you by the throat, he's strangling you, and the only way your wife, poor wife, can help you is to get the guy by his body. The weakling. And the guy lets go. And you give him a few punches and throw him out of the house. She saved your life. So what do you do to her? Come, 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 man. What will you do to her? What will you not do for her? Hmm? Your wife, she saved your life. You say, no, no, no. I'll hug her. I'll kiss her. Yes, 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 yes. Give her anything she wants. Yes. Natural, natural. Anybody. Whether you are a... a a man of religion, or an atheist, or an agnostic, anybody. This is your natural reaction. This person who saved your life. 
But this God of yours, he says, you must chop off a hand. So what? <laughs> no, impossible. Come, come, you got a Bible? Open his Bible, chapter 25, verse 11. So come on, read this. Is this the book of God? He said, yes. Read this. Tell me now. Is this from God? The most unnatural thing, eh? most merciless thing. To your benefactor, you chop off her hands. So now we're going back to your combat kit. Page 14. Page 14. Page 14 of your combat kit. Page 14 of your combat kit. That C, you see the C there? C. Put down P33 for C. That's for your easy references now. That C, put down P33 for C. C, 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 C. C, where's the C? Right. D, D, put 245 for the 6. For D, put 245 for the 6. For E, put 250. For E, put 250. So you don't have to start searching the book of Samuel, chapter 16, for your references. But now, when you are referring to the Christian, then you have to open it and say, right, or from your combat kit, you open up two Samuels, chapter 16, verses 4 to 15, open that, read that. That's how you use your combat kit. Now, coming back to your combat kit, Page 5. I want you to open page 5. Page 5 of your combat kit. A. A. You see the A? A talking ass. There's a donkey that talks. In the Holy Bible, talking ass. A. A talking ass. A. You got it? A talking donkey. A donkey that talks. It argues against his master. Huh? Page five. Page five. Page five. The absurdities in the Bible. Three. Three. Item three. It says a talking ass. Ass means a donkey. A donkey that talks, argues with his master. So why are you hitting me? I've been working for you for so many years. There was I ever unfaithful to you. <laughs> why do you beat me? <laughs> the donkey that talks. Right? Now from that A, you put up an arrow coming. Circle it. That's right. And now have an arrow coming out like that. Right. And then put down page 85. Page 85. You should one this side. One this side. Circle this. Circle this. B, circle B. The whole 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 verse. See? Is it like this? Circle the verse. Circle the verse. And one one reference this way, one reference that side. One reference this way, one that side. Alternate. So you know you have nice big writings. One this way, one that way. One this way, one that way. Four. Four. Circle this. Circle this. Circle this. You know? Circle this like that. And then have an arrow coming out, page 85. Circle it. That's it. And come it out. Page 85. Yeah. See, one this way, one this way. Very good. Very good. One this way, one reference this way. So alternate. So you'll have big writing. Page 85. You got it? This talks about a four-footed fowl, a chicken with four legs. Have you seen one? Huh? You know, if you start a chicken farm with your chicken with four legs, four drumsticks for every chicken, man, you'll make millions. You'll beat all the other chicken farms. You know that? Because every chicken got only two legs. You got two drumsticks. They call them drumsticks. Huh? But your chicken, from the Bible, you got four, four legs. So four drumsticks for each chicken. <laughs> Have you seen one? Have you heard of one? We heard about the dodo got extinct in Mauritius. You know, it was something like a duck, but it was too slow. So every animal, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, edit up, finished. Dodo, it's like a duck, it's finished. 
What happened to these four, four leg chickens? What happened to them? So there's no news. The scientists got nothing to tell you. Four leg, four leg chickens. Right. Next item. C. 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 Have an arrow coming out from C. And says page 85. Page 85. Birth of females, a double pollution. Yeah, it's on the same page. An arrow coming out from there to say page 85. Birth of females, a double pollution. When you were born, you young men, your mother was impure for seven days. But if a sister was born to you, your mother became impure for 14 days. And they say Islam is sexist. Is against the sexes. This God of yours, he punishes your mother, double punishment, if she were uh, uh, a girl. Does it make sense? The conception of a child, whether in wedlock or out of wedlock, is the same. The delivery of the child, whether it is legitimate or illegitimate, is the same. Whether boy or girl is the same. But God punishes your mother for begetting a girl. Double pollution. Doubly filthy. <laughs> now, what kind of a God is this? It makes your mother doubly guilty for bearing a girl child. You, you made her impure for seven days. Your sisters make her impure for 14 days. God, is that your God? Hmm? He's discriminating against all females. Double pollution. Next one. D. Circle D. Circle D. Circle D. And have an arrow coming out from D to say P 182. Page 182. It tells you about a Jew. Shamgar, a Jew. This Jew with a stick. They use for prodding cattle, oxen, in an ox cart. When the ox start going slow, people in India, Pakistan, I've seen, they prod it. It's a stick with a small nail. Prod it. So the poor thing starts running again. And when it slows down, you prod it again. You call it a goad. You're goading him on. On, come on. So with that ox goad, this Jew, Shamgar, he goes and kills 600 Palestinians. 600 with a stick. I'm asking, what were the Palestinians doing? Huh? 600. They were waiting. All 600 in a queue. And said, come on, come on, here, here. Sir, here, Shamgar, here, here. Make it easy for you. Here, 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 here. Huh? 600. Mm. Mm. And they're all waiting. I said, you bloody ghost. If they were not spat on the guy, the guy would have suffocated. Huh? <laughs> Bastard. They couldn't even do that. And they couldn't even run away. You can't even run. You know, one, two, he's done 300, 400. You bastard, you're still waiting. Huh? You deserve destruction. You deserve destruction, don't you? One guy, Jew, can kill 600 of you with a stick, with a little nail in front of it. 600 of you, you deserve to be destroyed. No? You deserve it, man. Damn it all, you can't even spit. You can't even run. You believe that fairy tale? That the Palestinians were such bloody goats that 600 they waited in a queue to be slaughtered by one Jew. But that's the book of God. According to the Christians, he's telling you, you've got to believe. God can't lie. Next one. Okay. 182. That was Shamgar. Next one, E. E. Page 195. E. Have an arrow coming out from E. And put down page 195. P195. P195. You must check these up, references at home, and mark them, mark them. It says there, Samson, another Jew. Another Jew, Samson, is a hero of the Jews. He kills 1,000 Palestinians with the jawbone of a donkey. You know, jawbone of a donkey. He kills 1,000 Palestinians. And he's singing a song. He sings a song. I want you to open up page, page, 195, page 195, page 195, open it and see how this Jewish hero, 
how he killed 1,000 Palestinians with the jawbone of a donkey. Verse number 15 and 16. 15 and 16. Circle them. Verses on page 195. Verses 15 and 16. Circle them. Fifteen and sixteen, circle them. Ah, oh, there's a there's a this thing of the of the Palestinians, uh, the emblem. Hmm? You got the emblem, yeah, that's the page. Emblem of the Palestinians. It says the Palestinians. The Palest Philistines. Verse 15 and 16. Circle it. And it reads. And he found a fresh jawbone of an ass, of an ass, of a donkey. He found, who Samson found, the fresh jawbone, fresh one. Not rotting one, fresh jawbone of a dead donkey. And put out his hand and seized it. He got it, hold of it. And with it, he slew a thousand men. One thousand he killed of the Palestinians. A thousand men. And Samson said, with the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of an ass, have I slain a thousand men, sing a song. One thousand Palestinians are killed with the jawbone of a donkey. And what were the Palestinians doing? Damn it all, one thousand waiting. <laughs> How do you kill with the jawbone? You smash the guy's skull, one. Smash the other guy's skull. It takes time to smash the guy's skull, or maybe he's too strong. Okay, one hit, one hit. A thousand and a thousand are waiting. Thousand Palestinians are waiting to be slaughtered by a Jew with the jawbone of a donkey. These Jews can't do with AK 47s. <laughs> what this guy did with the jawbone of a donkey. I'm telling the Jews, go and look for that bloody jawbone, man. You know, in your battle against the Palestinians. <laughs> what are you using AK 47 for? <laughs> and your Uzis. Huh? This Jew did a better job <laughs> with the jawbone of a donkey. Right. Back again to page five. Back again to page five. You see the next one, F, F, circle F, circle F, and put down page 1034. Circle F, page 1034. You read there about a seven-headed leopard. A leopard with seven heads, and every head got ten horns, and every horn, ten, ten crowns. Ah, yeah, I want some artist to draw that. A leopard with seven heads, and every head got... Ten ten horns, and every horn got ten ten crowns. Go on, paint it, paint it, paint it, paint it, my boys. You'll win a prize, I tell you, for artistry. Book of God. Next one. To eat shit and drink piss. G. Put down the pages 312 and 570. 312 and 570. To eat shit in the book of God. A man is told that he must eat shit and drink piss. Eat shit. Shit, you know, shit, masimba. In Zulu, the machine. Page 312 and 570. 312 and 570. Next one, H. H. Circle H. No, you don't look for them, Suleiman. Just mark them, that's all. That you do marking at home. Just mark the numbers, pages, numbers. Number F is what page was F, F was 1034. 1034. Yeah, 1034. F. And E is 195. E. I'm coming to, and G, E, F, G. G is page 312 and 570. G is 312 and 570. H, circle H, circle H, circle H. And have an arrow coming out, page 772, page 772. This book of God speaks about Plastering your face with shit. Dung. Plaster you with shit. Dung. They call it dung. It means shit. Excreta. You know, God's book. God says, this. plaster you with shit on your faces. Et. I, I, I. To eat shit. To eat cakes baked in shit. Page 665. Page 665. I, I is page 665. God Almighty tells his prophet Ezekiel, I want you to bake barley cakes 
with shit that comes out in your sight, I mean fresh, fresh shit. Bali cakes. The Bali flour with shit, fresh shit that's coming out in your sight, means you see the damn thing coming out, still steaming. Mix your flour with that and bake cakes and eat it. So this prophet of God, he said, my Lord, I've never had any unclean thing in my life. <laughs> what are you doing to me? So God says, all right, I'll do you a favor. All right, mix it with cow shit, cow dung. If not man shit, cow shit. Because cow shit doesn't smell as bad as man shit. Man shit smells like this, things like any blood. So God did him a favor. He says, not man shit, then cow shit, cow dung. Book of God. God telling him such instructions to his prophet. Eat sh barley cakes with shit. But with this shit, he's getting customers. With this shit, he's catching customers. <laughs> Last one, J, J, circle J, and put page 195. J 195. You read there, the same Samson, the guy who killed a thousand Palestinians, this great hero of the Jews. He goes to Gaza, same Gaza. You know the trouble taking place now? Same Gaza, for 3,000 years the damn trouble is going on between the Jews and the Palestinians. You know, there's nothing new. Same Gaza. Samson goes to Gaza now. And he sees a whore. What's a whore? A prostitute. And he goes in unto her. That's all. That's all. And he went in unto her. He saw a harlot, a whore, and he went in unto her. In the book of God. What's the moral? He says that he saw a whore and he went in unto her. Full stop. Verse 1. Chapter 16, verse 1. Finish. What's the lesson? Ian Fleming got his idea from there for his James Bond, 007. Yes. You have seen James Bond, 007? Yeah. You see, wherever he goes, you see a woman, he's gone into bed with her. You know, you see, wherever, I said, man, it's just like eating peanuts, man. Damn it all. He sees a woman, he's gone into her. James Bond, 007. He got his idea from here. Samson, he goes to Gaza, he sees a whore, and he went in and to her. The bastards. With the shit, the guy's getting customers, man. <laughs> and you and I, we are helpless. Helpless targets for the Christians. Right, page 8. This is the last exercise. Page 8. Page 8, item number 10. It speaks about God. Item 10. On page 8 of your combat kit, it speaks about God. It speaks about God. A. Have an arrow coming out from A and put down P, page 545. Page 545, 546, 545, 546, and 769. Three references for that first item. A. 545, 546, and 769. It speaks about a God who is hissing. He's a hissing God. Who hisses? Snakes. Snakes. The lions roar, the sheep bleed, the cows moo, the dogs bark, but God hisses. God hisses in the Bible, three places. Now this modern translation, they changed it. This is the Revised Standard Version. They change the word hissing to whistle. God whistles. He calls for the fly from the ends of the earth. He says, <laughs> I know you can do it better than me. A whistling God or a hissing God. Can you imagine? God hisses like a snake to draw your attention to call you. When I was like, <laughs> no, I might do that. <laughs> but God hissing for people. And the fly from the ends of the earth. <laughs> He's coming to the level of a fly. Huh? Right, next one, B, circle it. B, circle it. B, circle B, a roaring God. Have an arrow coming out. Circle it. Have an arrow coming out. And put down page 576 and 626. 576 and 626. The Bible speaks about a roaring God. He roars like a lion now. He hisses like a snake, and now he roars like a lion. Rawr! To frighten people. <laughs> Your God is a roaring God. Yeah. They change this one here to say he cries. He cries. 
the altar light. Every Bible on earth, everybody has the of God will be there roaring. But this one is the latest now. They change that it. it's now roaring, doesn't sound nice. So they got, um, they got, he cries to the people. And so he roars like a lion. He doesn't roar anymore, he cries now. <laughs> there you come, my son, my dog. He doesn't roar to frighten you. He cries to you. But every Bible the Christian has will have the word roaring. Every Bible the Christian has will have the word hissing. This is something new. We can't help it, we couldn't get the King James Version. So this is the only thing available in Mombasa. We have to get them for you. So you can be ready. Next one. C. C. Page 546. C. Page 546. C. 546. It speaks about a barber god. You know barbers? You call them hairdressers now. Don't call people barbers, they get insulted. Eh? Don't call people barbers, call them hairdressers. Huh? They, they call them tonsorial artists. Tonsorial artists. That's a new name for them. Don't call a barber a barber. You know, in my country, they'll cut your bloody throat. Call him a hairdresser or a tonsorial artist. <laughs> Give me a good name. Give me respect. Don't say barber. This God Almighty is a barber God. He's telling you with a hired razor, he's going to shave your head and your beard and the hair on your legs with a hired razor. He can't even have one of his own, poor God. <laughs> no, he can't afford to have one. He hires a razor and he's going to shave your head of your hair and your beard and the hair on your legs. But he doesn't say how high will he will come. <laughs> how high? Because there's hardly any hair at the, on, below the calf, you know. The hairs are all on the top, you know. He's going to clean them up for you. God. Baba. Your God is a Baba. Hajjam. Hajjam. We call them Hajjams. That's the Holy Bible. Next one. Next one. D. Circle D and put down P5 and 616. P5 and 616. It speaks about God that he is a penitent God. He is repenting for what he has done. He made man, Adam and Hawa. But he didn't know what he was creating, poor God. P5 and 616. This God Almighty, he didn't know what he was making. A monster, a Frankenstein monster he made. He didn't know what he was making. Now, because of that now, that man, he didn't know that he was going to sin. He didn't know that he had to kick him out. He had to kick him out. And he's going to breed like rats. Today, five and a half billion Adams and Eves. Five and a half billion on earth. Because what mistake he made. And all of them are bloody rubbish. Hmm? 25 million sodomites in America. Gays. Gays. You call them gays. 25 million. The total population of Kenya, men, women and children. That number of people who are gay, sodomites in America. Did God know that? That look, this Adam is going to breathe that kind of stuff. So he's repenting, penitent. <laughs> I wish I hadn't made man. He didn't know what he was making. He created a frankincense monster for which he had to come into the world, go into a woman's womb, live there for nine months, eat the menses. He was fed with menses. You know the menstruation? It stops when the woman is, becomes pregnant. Where does it go? Through the umbilical cord into the child's system. All of us. So this God was fed with that. This God Almighty who created Adam and Eve, he came 4,000 years after Adam. He came into the womb of Mary and he ate the menses and he was born like every other human child with all the filth and the muck. God coming out of the woman's hole and circumcised on the eighth day. Did he know he'll have to do all this? So. He's making Toba, Toba, Mustafa, what an idea. <laughs> created this man. He's a penitent God. He's repenting for what he had done. My God, he knows what he's doing. There he is God, he didn't know. Right. Next one. E, E. Have an arrow coming out from E. 256, page 256, E. A God who's riding a cherub. A chirub. Come on, tell me somebody, what is a chirub? The first guy who tells me what is a chirub, he gets this. 
Cheer up. It's an angel, a naked angel. Chirup, chirup. Huh? Chariot. Huh? Yeah. Young ass. Donkey. Young donkey. Small child. A small childlike angel. That young ass was nearly very near. You said a young girl, a young angel, you would have got it. Uh, yours is the nearest. You get this. You see an angel, according to the Western artists, you see pictures, beautiful pictures, drawings, of a beautiful woman with wings. Proportion 36, 24, 36. You know, 36, 24, 36. With wings. But the woman's age, from the picture you can see, she is about 20, I'm sorry, 25, 30. Mature woman, beautiful woman with wings. That's an angel, according to the Western art. A cherub is a 12-year-old, something nice and crisp. 14-year-old in her teens, teens, not 20s, in her teens. That's called a cherub. And God Almighty is riding a cherub, like that. Your 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 Superman. You know how he flies. <laughs> so this God can't do it, fly like that. He has to ride a cherub, a young thing, 12-year-old, 14-year-old. Of course, according to the, this thing, art, I saw in the uh, Vatican. Cherubs, two cherubs there. In the Vatican, in the Holy of Holies of Christendom. I got the photo of that. And uh, then I was having, doing, a, a doing a debate. I, I wanted to show that to the audience. The picture I took of these cherub, cherubs in the Vatican in, in, in Rome in marble, flesh-colored marble, two young things, naked, absolutely naked in marble, flesh color. And when you fondle the buttocks of those angels, because people have been fondling, you can see the sheen, the shine, you know, on the buttocks, because everybody wants to feel. You, you get an electric shock. You get an electric shock. I wanted to put that on the, on the, uh, on, on the camera, but I know that that t video of mine would be banned in Saudi Arabia. See, they do every tape that goes in, a quick shh. They don't care what you're talking, but they see what they're seeing. They see a naked picture, straight out, finish. So for that, I didn't want to produce that on the film. I don't want to produce it on my camera here. Because once it goes to Saudi Arabia, the damn thing is banned. So far, Ahmadidah tapes are all going through. Ahmadidah's name is good. But as soon as they catch one, Ahmadidah, the naked girls, no man, what I'm trying to say. This is in the Holy of Holies, this cherubs, two beautiful women, young thing, 14 year old, 14 year old, with wings, with nice beautiful breasts. This is, uh, God is riding her, and they're naked. What do they wear? Angels, what do they wear? Huh? Sarongs? What do they wear? What do Swahili women wear? What do they wear? <laughs> right. But these are naked things. God is riding her. <laughs> Can you believe it? The God riding the cherubs. I'm asking on her back, on the cherub's back, hmm? or on the stomach, sitting on her stomach and she's doing backstroke with the wings. <laughs> Which way? Tell me, man, how, how does he make, how does he sit on the, the cherubs? God, the Almighty who permeates the whole universe, he's sitting on a cherub, man. <laughs> very, very sadistic, very sadistic. But this is God's book, he says. This is the book of God. God inspired it. Is the last item here, is it? Right, last item. F, circle F, and put the number 209. Two, 209. A God who murders 50,070 for looking into a box. God Almighty, he kills 50,070 Jews for looking into a box. I have a small curtain here. I put it in the entrance. I said, anybody looking into that box, I'll kill you. Last night I gave reference to that. I'll kill anybody. That box there. Anybody looking into the box, I'll kill you. And the first guy is inquisitive. Man is inquisitive by nature. You see signs saying wet paint. Wet paint, you want to go and feel it. You want to go and 
who, who appointed you for that? Who pays you for that? Who asked you to go and test it? No, but the nature of man. He says, wet paint, you want to make sure. Is it wet? <laughs> Is it your father's business that? They're telling you to keep away, man. And you go and want to feel it. That's man. He's inquisitive. So I tell you, don't look into the box. So the first guy goes and looks into the box. Now what am I going to do? I said, I'll kill you. So I stopped the guy. Say, hey! And he remembers. Ha! I said, I had warned. I had warned you all. I'll kill you. So he said, please forgive me. Lord, forgive me. If I am a merciful God, I'll forgive the guy. But if I'm vengeful, I said, I told you I'll kill you. And I'm a God of my word. I kill the man. I'm saving 50,069 people by killing that one guy. But no, this God Almighty, he allowed 50,070 to march past. Single file. How else can 50,000 see in a box? Single file, as if paying respect to the Queen, Queen of England. She's dead, and everybody wants to go and see in her casket, her face. Her face, out of respect. For 50,070 to pass that box, it'll take a week. One week. But God is patient. He's waiting. He's going to get his full pound of flesh. He allows 50,070 to pass. Then he kills them all. He widows 50,000 women. And he orphans 100,000 children for looking into a box. Merciful God. Loving Father in heaven. This is loving Father. But this is his, his stock in trade. This is the material he's using to catch the fish. And there are millions who are getting caught. Millions in the world. We have to now arm our people, show it to our people the most nonsensical book, the filthiest, dirtiest religious book on earth. George Bernard Shaw, he said, is the most dangerous book on earth. Keep it under lock and key. Your children must not have access to it. And the Plain Truth magazine, the Christian magazine, Plain Truth from America, on the topic of the Bible, it says, many a censor will give it an X rating. Rubbish. Many a censor will give the Bible an X rating. Yes, my sons, any questions? Who's uh, George Bernard Shaw? George Bernard Shaw was a great English play playwright, writing plays. He's a literary man, genius. Yes, any questions? Yes. Phrase that you use, which is there in the Bible, which you also repeated yesterday, uh, verily, verily, I said to you, except your righteousness, and so on. Now, what happens is we have tried to find out, but we don't know who were the scribes and the Pharisees and what were their actions. Because when we do uh, highlight this to the Christians, they ask us that who were the scribes and the Pharisees. They say it to the Jews. We say it's not the Jews, but then uh, we don't know who were they and what were their actions. Uh, last night I quoted you a verse. Jesus Christ telling his disciples, the Jews, so the verily, verily, means most certainly I'm telling you, accept your righteousness, your good deeds, exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Who is he talking to? He's talking to his own people, the Jews. He is telling them that they must be better than the other Jews who are keeping the laws and the commandments. The Jews were a law-abiding people. The scribes mean the learned man. And the Pharisees mean the priestly class of the Jews. They are making a pretense. They fast. They are fasting. But when they fast, they don't wash their faces. They don't brush their hair. To be seen of men like me, you know, unkempt, unwashed face and all that with muck in the eyes. And you went to an uncle, what's wrong? You're not too well. I said, no, I'm fasting, my son. I'm fasting. So okay, say, hey, uncle did that. There's a very holy man. He's fasting. He's fasting. Poor fellow is fasting. And he's doing the job. He's fasting. That's the impression. So Jesus says, no, you, my followers, you must be better than the Jews. They are fasting, but they're doing it for show. You, you wash your face and brush your hair. Nobody must know that you're fasting because you're doing it for the love of God, not for show. So at every step he's telling them that you must be better than the Jew. Jew means the guys, scribes and the Pharisees. Those who are making a pretense of piety, holiness. Don't be like that, like a bloody hypocrite. Be better than the Jew. Meaning, he's, you are also Jew, but that is a priestly class. Scribes and the Pharisees, you'll be better than that. That's it. Right, last question. Uh, just in a general way, among the Christians, that the wife of Hadrat 
Ibrahim alayhi salam that uh, this second wife of Hadrat Ibrahim, Hadrat, Hajar, or Hagar, that this lady had been an Egyptian slave, and the king had given the slave to Hadrat Ibrahim. But uh, to us Muslims, we believe that she was a royal princess. Is there anywhere in the Bible so that we could prove such a claim? No, the Bible was written for Jews, by the Jews, for the Jews. So, and they have a hatred for Hajra and her children. So whatever we say, the guy is not prepared to accept. The, is, the, the Ishmaelites count for nothing, they are rubbish. They are children of a born woman. As such, a Jew said, they are bastards. See, Sarah is a legitimate wife, her children is legitimate Ishaq, and her children are legitimate children. But that of Hajra are illegitimate because she is a born woman, a slave woman. I say, accept it. Born woman, she is a slave woman. So I'm asking the Jew. The Jew did it to me. He told me, he told me that Ishmael was a bastard. So there's no way you can fight it out. No, no, there's a way of fighting out. There's a way of fighting out. I said, the Jew told me that Ishmael is a bastard. I got him to my house. I fed him well. And I asked him, I said, you remember in the shop you told me we used to work together? You said Ishmael is a bastard. He said, yes. All my samosas and bhajas didn't have any effect. So I'm asking him, I said, in your religion, Judaism, which is preferable for a man to marry his own sister and beget child by her, or a marry a slave woman, an African woman, and beget child by her, according to Judaism, which is preferable? He said, no, the slave woman is preferable than your own sister. I said, according to eugenics, inbreeding, which is preferable? For a man to be a child from his own sister or from a bond woman, a slave woman, an African woman, a negress. He said, no, the negress is preferable. This is a white Jew talking. He said, right. Yes, the answer is correct. I said, according to your common sense, which is preferable, your sister for begetting children or a slave woman, an African woman for begetting children? Which is preferable? He said, no, the African woman is preferable. That's the right answer. So I said, open the book. Book of Genesis. I forget the reference now. I'll give you the book. I'll give you the book. I'll give you the book. I said, it says there that Abraham, when he went to a certain place, the king of the place, he saw Sarah. That Sarah was beautiful. A Hebrew woman. So he wanted her. For sex. The kings, they had the prerogative. Any woman, he has a right. Say you, that woman, send her into the house. My harem. You can't say no, it'll kill you. Whether it's your mother or your sister or daughter, the king says, I want that woman. Send her in. So you got to send her in. So this king is asking Ibrahim alayhi salam, what is this woman to you? Sarah. So he said, she is my sister. So Sarah, send her in. So Ibrahim, helpless. He's going to get killed. So he sent Sarah in. And the king, whole night, he was trying to get right with her, says the Bible. But something happened, he couldn't connect. Next morning, frustrated, he's asking Ibrahim, say, hey, what is this woman to you? Because on account of her, whole night, I couldn't sleep, man. So he says, now, nah, she's my wife. He said, then why did you lie to me? Had you told me that she's your wife, you are a man of God, you know, I would never have done or tried to do what I was trying to do whole night. Why did you lie to me? So Abraham says, I didn't lie to you. For indeed, she is my sister. Indeed, without doubt, she is my sister of the same father, but different mother. But she is your sister, your father's daughter. And he went and he made her his wife. So I said, if Ishmael is a bastard, then Isaac is a greater bastard, according to Judaism, according to eugenics, and according to your common sense. You agree? That's facts are here in here. I want all of you all to stay seated, please. We are going to distribute some pamphlets. Uh, now, what did we use? We've got two tapes to give away. Right.
about the fish of swine. Right. Anybody who finds Levit Leviticus 11 8, right. they can have two tapes. Just now. Tell them all to close the Bible. Right. And then you just take right. it and then you right. get it. Uh, right. One more thing. The guy who finds it must stand up right. and, and read it. Right. Just now. Right. Just right. wait until the pamphlets are given to you. Just take it. Everyone, can you close your Bibles at the same time? Please close your Bibles. Please close your Bibles. No questions asked. This combat kit has got so many subjects there inside. If you started dealing with it, that's a course in itself. It may take you weeks and months to do this book. You have to do the homework at home. Look up the references, things that you're interested in, search them out, and mark them in your Bible. Put down page so-and-so, so-and-so, page so-and-so. So easy reference for yourself. Use this as an index. Use this as an index to your Bible now. Your index, your Bible is a scud, Christian scud. With this one here, you turn it into a Patriot missile. How to turn it back on the Christian with this little booklet. So you have to familiarize yourself with the subject matter in this combat kit of yours. Now I want you all to do a little exercise. And the first person, first person Just. who finds a reference to what I'm going to tell you will get these two tapes, videotapes of my debates. One of them is debate in Sweden and the other one is crucifixion, fact or fiction. Two tapes. Just one answer. One simple question I want you to answer. Already? Right. In your combat kit, you'll find the flesh of swine is forbidden. So find the flesh of swine is forbidden. And the first guy who finds that, swine, flesh of swine is forbidden. Find the verse, find the verse, find the verse. Find the verse. And read it. I want to hear. First guy who reads it. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up and read. And the Lord spoke to Aaron, saying, Drink no wine, nor strong drink. You, you know yourself, your son, with you. When you, when you go to the tent of meeting, It shall be a station for ever throughout your generation. Come on, next one. Yes. Stand up. The flesh of the swine. No good. In the Bible. Find it in your Bible. Yes. And the Lord spoke to Aaron, saying, Drink no wine, no strong. Drink you know, know your son. If you when you go into the No good. Come on, come on, yes. And the Lord spoke to Aaron saying, Drink no wine nor strong drink, you you nor your sons with you when you go into the tent of meeting. No good, no good, no good. No good, yes. Of their flesh you shall not eat, and the carcasses you shall not touch. They are unclean to you. Very good, very good. Read it aloud, let them all hear. They didn't find it, man, and you want to fight the Christian. Of that guy comes with AK-47 and it takes you such a long time. Come on, listen. Of their flesh you shall not eat, and their carcasses you shall not, not touch. touch. Uh -huh. They are unclean to you. Right, the flesh of the swine, the Bible says, is unclean to you. You must not touch even the dead body of a pig. That is on page... 85. Page 85, right at the top. Page 85, right at the top. Verse 8. Verse 8. You people were looking for chapter 10, verse 8. The first guy, second guy, is reading chapter 10, verse 8. 
it should be chapter 11, verse 8. Right? Who's that? This brother here. That's right. Right. Wish you all the best in your hunting. Inshallah. Jazakallah for that. Shukran.